Welcome back, Confirmands, to our look at the story of Scripture, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. As always, have your Bible and your catechism ready to look up any passages or questions and answers we need to look up together, and have a pen or a pencil and some paper nearby to write down any notes or questions for class on Sunday. So with that, let's begin, as we always do, by remembering that we are baptized and beloved children of God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our previous video, we saw God begin to interact with his people in, enti in an entirely new way. If you remember, throughout the Old Testament, God related to his people through covenants and promises, but all of those pointed to something even greater, something more amazing coming, a Savior who would save God's people from their sins. And this promise was fulfilled. As our gospel writers tell us, it was fulfilled by God becoming true man and being born of a virgin. And so let's ask that question, so what? Why did God have to become human in the first place to save us? Well, let's look at questions 159 and 160 in our catechism for that answer. Why is it so important for us as sinners that the Son of God has become our brother, or has become human, like one of us. And as you look at questions 159 and 160, you can see there that there are a lot of reasons why God needed to become human to save us. So let's take a look at just a few of them, all right? We're not going to take a look at all of them, just a few of them. So, first of all, you know, being sinners, we know that we cannot keep God's law, much less keep it perfectly. But Jesus becoming human fulfilled God's law perfectly on our behalf. As sinful humans, we know that we are going to die. But being human, Jesus overcame death, so that way we can be raised from the dead through our baptism into his death and resurrection. As sinful humans, we cannot know who God truly is, right? Remember, our sin separates us from God. But as Jesus became human, he revealed God to us. If we want to know who God is, all we have to do is look at Jesus. As sinful humans, our prayers really don't need to be listened to or answered by God, but yet Jesus, being human, intercedes for us before the Father. And because he became human, Jesus is able to identify with us in all of our weaknesses and our doubts, our sufferings and our trials, and yet through it all, Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. So if we want to know who God is, all we have to do is look at Jesus. And the stories surrounding Christ's birth also tell us a lot about who God is. First, we see that he is a God who uplifts the humble and cares for the oppressed. So let's take a look at, at a few of the ways in the stories that we can see that. Well, first of all, God chose a, hum a humble teenager to give birth to his very son, and God chose a humble man who wanted to serve his wife however he could to be the earthly father to God's son. God chose a town in an out-of-the-way place that nobody really cared about to be the birthplace of the world's Savior. And instead of being born around family or friends or even really important people, Jesus was born around farm animals, stinky, smelly farm animals. And instead of announcing the birth of this Savior to the world's elite, the rulers, the wealthy, God announced his great news of great joy to humble shepherds, the outcasts of society, as they watched their flocks by night. And as God lifts up the humble and the oppressed, he also gives us joy. He gave joy to Elizabeth, a woman who had no children, which at the time was really important because at the time, if you didn't have children, you were seen to be cursed. And so she conceived and gave birth to her son, John, who, as we can see, would eventually prepare the way for Jesus and his ministry. So God gave joy to Elizabeth. He sent angels to the shepherds 
to share with them the great joy that is for all the people. And even though we didn't talk about their story uh, in our last video, God gave joy to Simeon and to Anna, some people who were rather advanced in age, as they saw the Son of God in the temple before they died. Most importantly, the stories around Jesus' birth show us that God came to save us. If you look at the songs of Zechariah and Mary in Luke chapter 1, we see Zechariah say, He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And we see Mary sing, He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And Zechariah and Mary, they were Jewish, but the salvation was not just for the Jews. It was for all the people. Remember the Magi that we talked about in our last video? They were foreigners. And yet, as they came to see Jesus, they received salvation, these foreigners. Even Simeon said, My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light for a revelation to the Gentiles. And, as we saw in our previous video as well, Jesus' name itself points to the job that Jesus was going to do. His name, Jesus, reminds us that he was brought here to save his people from their sins. And so, as we come to the end of this video, let's end with Luke's words, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So is Jesus increased in wisdom and favor with God and man? We too are called to grow in faith as we read his word, come to worship regularly, and as we serve one another. That's our hope for you in this class, in this confirmation class, that you continue to grow in wisdom and as you continue to grow in faith. We hope that this is what this class does for you, because that is what you are called to do when you are baptized. So, with that in mind, let's close with our blessing. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. All right, thank you. We will see you next time.